All yours, Steve? Thank you, Chip. You're hired. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get out of your way here. Sorry about that. It's okay if I stand. Sure. As long as we can pull the mic to wherever you're going to be. Great. <laughs> Let me just get rid of the light on you. And uh, you're unplugged, so I'm not, I'll worry about that later. And good. Thank you. Thanks for uh, for having me tonight, uh, Nick. It was a. Uh, at first, I was a little disappointed that we weren't on first, but it was a very interesting presentation. So I'm glad I sat through it. Thank you. Sounds like an opportunity for collaboration. <laughs> we've uh, we've worked together in the past. In fact, the Presumpscott uh, location facility uh, we converted with uh, LED lighting a few years back. So we've uh, we've we've met the group up in Portland. I thought I would, uh, after that introduction, I thought I would uh, just take a few moments to tell you a little bit about um, the city LED. I do I do have packages for all of you, uh, while not overhead screens, because uh, I think we have you know subject matter that's a little bit different. Um, we actually have for. Uh, for the town of Berwick, a complete uh, presentation for you, which, uh, if depending on your time, uh, we certainly can talk specifically about the details. Um, for the town of North Berwick, we've put together some of uh, the details for you, but I think we have a few things. Uh, for example, network value, uh, that's Central Maine Power's, uh, the, the one piece that we don't have from North Berwick is, is your network value number, do we? Uh, so we can, you know, talk about the numbers, but there's that check that you'll have to write for your municipal purchase. Um, and for Lebanon, while we've started working on it and we have all your data, uh, because you're officially in the RFP stage, as we talked about, uh, it, it wouldn't be appropriate for us to present anything uh, prior to the, the RFP date. Uh, obviously, they more just, just just they more or less presented because this got delayed. We brought them in ahead of time. It was going to be here, but it's so. And since then, we've now put out an RFP as of April one, um, which is why he then obviously now we're in that RFP period, which is why he won't talk about us tonight. So, I'll, so I'll walk briefly through a little bit of our history. We were founded in two thousand twelve. Uh, you'll see this in the official introduction letter for uh, for the town of Berwick. We were founded in two thousand twelve in Portsmouth. Uh, uh, my colleague John Brannigan has his. Uh, his toes in the water and a cold beer in his hand in Florida, visiting his uh, his mom with his family uh, uh, a couple of days ahead of the, the main school break. So otherwise he would be here. Uh, John lives in South Berwick. Uh, I'm from Portsmouth. We founded in Portsmouth and our facility is in the Washington Street Mill in Dover, New Hampshire. Uh, and appropriately with that introduction, uh, when we started our company in 2012, um, with my supply chain background and John's uh, business development um, and licensing background, we both originally came from the Timberland Company, actually, and I was overseas for many years with the company. Uh, we, uh, the, the goal was always to bring manufacturing back to the U.S., and it was a real challenge to figure out how to do that. And in 2015, we finally received all of our certifications to build street lighting right in the Dover, uh, in our Dover facility. So we have U.S. veterans building all of our product um, from uh, street lights. We started with street lights, um, and uh, we added parking lot lights, basically shoebox replacements and floods that we build there. And uh, last year in 2018, we started building our own smart connected, called click connected, smart lighting for buildings. Uh, in fact, uh, the first introduction of click connected smart lighting for buildings was actually, uh, is actually being uh, just completed now in the Rochester School District. It's the largest lighting project in the state of New Hampshire for 1819. It's a $1.2 million project. We're installing over six. A thousand fixtures uh, into the Rochester School District. Uh, we we had one of the major cities uh, actually did a walkthrough of the Rochester Middle School today, and they were just 
blown away by it. So after you know those six thousand you make in your facility? We make in our facility, yes, all built by US veterans. Uh, you'll see everything that we, uh, we we give to you. It'll say American built, assembled with pride by US veterans in Dover, New Hampshire. Um, and that's uh, something we're really I am not a, a veteran, um, although I look back and think that I should have. Uh, Chip and I had a conversation before. I'm the, the, uh, a proud uh, U.S. Navy dad. My son is a lieutenant uh, in the Navy. He's currently deployed overseas for his third time um, uh, what, and uh, uh, is a graduate of Norwich University and we had our conversation about Chip's career and um, we, uh, we have a combination of uh, of Navy, Air Force, and Marines. Um, we are in conversation right now because we're hiring more employees that soon the Army will join. And uh, we, we had several Coast Guard employees in the past as well. Um, and there were lots of jokes that went around by the Navy guys, which are the majority. <laughs> How to, what, when a Coast Guard ship goes down, what, what do the Coast Guard guys do? They roll up their, they roll up their pants and they walk to shore. <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, that's what the Navy guys all have to say. So uh, we have uh, we've installed the the topic tonight. Of course, uh, is about street lighting, and I I also think that you know at some point we'd love to have a conversation uh, with all of you in support of MSAD about uh, the type of savings that will come from uh, the potential conversion of LED lighting in the schools. Rochester will save almost one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. Uh, electricity uh, as a result of the smart lighting. Our street lighting, currently our, our project underway right now, uh, which I think is number 35 um, um, in New Hampshire and Maine, is the city of Augusta. We're about two-thirds through um, installing uh, almost 2,300 uh, street lights uh, with, uh, and in the city of Augusta it's all networked and smart controls uh, built in so instead of a photo cell we actually have a wireless communication node that's actually installed on top of the, the fixture instead of the traditional photo cell. Most communities have the photo cell. Uh, we were the first and only um, company to be able to uh, install uh, smart controls in the state of New Hampshire, the city of Dover. Uh, has almost 1,800 smart controlled uh, street lights uh, and we have, uh, like I said, I think we're on number 35 um, with the city of uh, Augusta and we're moving into uh, the city of Gardner after that. As soon as Augusta's finished, we're already under contract and the materials are on the ground at the public work, so we'll be moving into Augusta next. Elliot was our first main uh, installation. We had great weather in February um, for for doing that and uh, um, Elliot completed in just a couple days. I think they had a hundred street lights so it was a, a fairly quick installation. Um, we are not the first to be in the state of Maine. Uh, there were others uh, in before us. We entered in the in the second quarter of last year. Finally there were changes in May to the tariff that made it clear about how to be able to actually offer a proposal that would represent what your costs would be uh, moving forward in terms of uh, it, both installation cost plus the change in your your monthly cost that you would um, be responsible uh, through Central Maine Power and potentially any third party um, a provider of your energy. So uh, with that we started putting proposals out and the first two uh, bids that uh, were, were put out were in Kittery and Elliott. Um, Kittery we are uh, just signing the contractual details now. We've been awarded Kittery as well. So there's Augusta, Gardner, Elliott and Kittery to date and there's a, well I'd rather not put the names on the table, there's a, about two dozen other communities that we're under conversation with similar to what we're doing with you tonight. Uh, across the state of New Hampshire, um, we have installed almost 30,000 street lights uh, across the state. Um, humbly uh, speaking, we have installed more street lights in more communities and been competitively awarded in more uh, communities um, than all of the street lighting industry competitors combined. So we're pretty proud to be uh, Northern New England's number one uh, LED street lighting manufacturer. 
and most importantly, knowing that they're all being uh, built by U.S. veterans. Um, so it's a it's a great feeling, and uh, we're we're humbled and uh, thrilled that our success continues, and hope that we can help you as well. Um, our light is um, pretty unique in that. Um, the certifications that are required for uh, for street lights are uh, fairly extensive in terms of uh, qualifying. You know their expected lifetimes. Everything has to be third party certified for us to receive uh, Design Lights Consortium uh, listings, uh, which is is initially intended to uh, confirm uh, the energy efficiency without being able to. Um, uh, extend any uh, performance uh, quotes above what the lights will actually do or lifetime so a lot of the testing is set by the Department of Energy and by the uh, Northeast Energy Partners who actually created the Design Lights Consortium so that they could have a way to reliably understand whose equipment was good and whose equipment potentially was not. So everything has to be uh, third party certified to be Design Lights Consortium uh, listed. Uh, and, uh, and it's up, you know, put up on a website that uh, utilities and municipalities alike uh, can go and say, is, is it or is it not actually listed? Um, we're tested for uh, lifetimes of our LED chips. We're tested for overall ratings of our energy efficiency. And, uh, and of course, as part of that, we also have to have the right safety certification. So everything that we're showing you tonight is UL certified. And our facility also has to be, on a quarterly basis, also uh, UL inspected. Uh, with surprise drive-bys by uh, UL inspectors to come in and say, what are you building today? Get your files out. Let's see if you're making them the way you're supposed to be making them. Um, uh, from anything from uh, documentation that shows wire that's traced back to the, the spool um, and that all materials that were certified on the original UL product um, are, in fact, on every delivery um, there's, there's additional certifications that we're using those materials. So no changes. Uh, we use the best of materials out there. Uh, uh, there are many, many LED chip manufacturers. The, the, the world has uh, come a long way in terms of stabilization of LED technology. We've chosen to use uh, an American company, Cree uh, Chips. Uh, while maybe you've heard the news that Cree is actually selling their lighting division, um, it's because they're focusing on what they do best, which is they're incredible chip makers. Um, and after making uh, extensive decisions about who we were going to use, we made a decision to stick to Cree. So these are some of the best Cree chips that are made out there. Uh, they are the best Cree chips that are made out there. We use uh, Meanwell drivers. Meanwhell is uh, one of the is the, the world's leading uh, power system company. So our our lights are. Uh, produced with Meanwell drivers. Uh, we use Wago connectors, which is a German technology, a German brand. Um, and uh, we actually create our lights with a quick disconnect so that once we've installed them, uh, inclusive in the state of Maine, um, under central Maine power, inclusive of a fuse that has to be installed in line as part of the installation for all central Maine power installations. Um, any future maintenance will be able to disconnect with a very simple, um, you know, uh, disconnect that can be done by uh, any good qualified master electrician like the Johnsons. Uh, we've worked together in the past also uh, for uh, uh, because Mike, Mike's uh, done some terrific work for us. I was surprised to see you today, so it's, and it's nice to see you. Um, anyway. Um, our housings are all made, um, are uh, powder coated with a 10 year powder coating. We use all of the metallics, the screws, and the fixings on here are uh, made for corrosive environments. It's actually uh, marine grade uh, stainless. Uh, New England winters are brutal, um, and New England weather near the seacoast is, uh, and, and the air is fairly corrosive, so we've uh, specced that in. Um, and we've also built the light so that, um, uh, you know, over the next 20 years, 
um, these, which is the expected lifetime of these, that you can expect these lights are going to continue to perform and stay on the poles and not fall apart uh, by making sure that everything is made out of um, uh, aluminum housings and then powder coated. Uh, what have I missed? Does anybody have any questions? So, uh, the uh, uh, would you like me to light one of these up? Our re our recommendation is um, our. Is there a variety of styles, or is that the, the primary design? Uh, it's dependent on uh, the style of the light. Is dependent on what you're replacing. Generally, we're out there working with uh, you know cobra heads. The classic cobra head. Most of what you've got across the communities are high pressure sodium, that orange glow uh, that has about a 20 25 percent uh, actual color rendering. Um, so we're used to that orange glow, but actually um, it, it doesn't, you know, the, the, the grass has turned orange since high pressure sodium uh, was put in. Uh, if you laid a $5 bill on the ground and you took a picture of it, you'd be surprised that you took a picture of an orange $5 bill. Um, under the LED lighting, you're, you're over 70%, uh, generally in the range of about 75% of actual color rendering to natural sunlight. So the grass is going to get green again. Um, and the other piece of, uh, the important piece of, I'm just going to put a, a shorting cap on here. They don't operate without something in the photocell receptacle. Without a, um, the other piece of what you know, our lights are designed for is um, they are compliant with dark sky requirements. So uh, not a single lumen in the testing that's put in a, 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 a globe, uh, not a single lumen is allowed to, to uh, point up, not one single lumen. Um, and there are ranges of very high, high, medium, and low angles where we have to meet requirements of how many lumens are, are set. And what what is that is for is because there are there are ratings called bug ratings, back, up, and glare ratings that all lights are given. Uh, and again, you have to pass certain requirements uh, to be able to comply and, and meet DLC requirements for street lighting. Uh, uh, our lights are designed to uh, provide, I think I can plug this in now, in good shape. So as you can see, we're, we're using a, a th uh, our recommendation is 3000K. 3000K is a warmer light than you'll see out there uh, and that you have seen out there. Most of our installations over the past couple years anyway, almost have been 100% 3000K. Um, the American Medical Association has recommended for 3000K, uh, which is a warmer light uh, because it has less blue spectrum in it. Um, and you'll see that the optics, if you were standing under a typical street light, you'd have light pretty much going anywhere because the optics are designed to direct the light where, um, where the street is and some uh, behind the pole, you'll see that um, using this type, these type of LED optics, you'll get one and three quarter, 1.75 times the height, uh, the pole height is the distance that it will throw in front of the pole, and it will throw some light to the back, but there's also a cutoff on even the highest levels of glare behind it, so uh, you don't, what you won't see is a lot of light going into the bedroom windows like uh, street lights do today, depending on where they're located, that they're on the street. Um, the lumen value, the actually light output as we do the takedowns with you um, from what you've got installed today to what we recommend, you'll see that the light output actually on the streets is actually more than you've got today. Although they have less lumen output, you're not throwing it everywhere uh, because the the optics are directed very specifically. If you were here standing behind this and looking up at the street light, you'd say it feels like it's a little bit dim because the light isn't being directed at your eye if you're standing behind the pole looking up. But if you stood right under it, 
and, and stared up at it, of course it's going to be really bright and uncomfortable uh, because the light is only being presented where it should be, which is directly down to the street uh, with a long throw up and down the street. Is the height any different from what the uh, existing lights are? Uh, it's the same height, so uh, what, what we'll be doing as part of our installation is we will, uh, I'm just going to put this right here for now. We don't have to worry about heat because it doesn't put off a lot of heat. What we'll be doing is using the existing mast arms. Uh, the installation uh, um, involves uh, putting in a, uh, a fuse between the, the power coming from the pole and into the mast arm. Um, that's required by central main power so that there can be a complete disconnection of power. Um, it's different than what Eversource and Unitil in New Hampshire require. Um, and, uh, and then we uh, take off the old Cobra head. Uh, we dispose of the mercury-based lamps that are in there, the bulbs themselves. And we also dispose of the uh, Cobra heads so that they're, and give you a proper certificate of disposal so that you have, you know, that you've, you've taken proper care of hazardous materials. Um, we use universal recycling technologies out of Dover. We'll actually come in and pick up everything um, once it's all done. Our installation involves, uh, in, in Maine, uh, we're using Coots Brothers. Uh, it's a company out of Randolph, Maine. They've been uh, Central Maine power contractors for 53 years. Um, a long history of working with Central Maine power and working on their lines. And uh, they will come through, install the fuse, remove the Cobra head, and put on the new uh, LED light. And dependent on um, if you decided to go with smart controls, which allow you to actually monitor the health of your system and understand if lights are uh, out or not, um, uh, and eventually that you'll be able to, and the trend is definitely coming that way because they do actually meter how much power you're using, at some point, probably very soon, um, it, you would expect that regulations will change uh, and that you'll be able to pay for what you actually consume versus what's assumed that you consume. Um, and it's all based on uh, the Farmer's Almanac, I think. It's estimated hours of darkness. So you're actually not measured, it's unmetered uh, uh, bills. Um, and that's why uh, there's a large trend to go to um, you know, networked lighting so that you actually uh, can make decisions about how much you consume, when you consume it, and, uh, and you'll be able to actually um, have those records. And uh, there are um, already signs uh, in Massachusetts that uh, there are tariffs being presented uh, for, for actual consumption. So that smart sensor also can be used for metering? Yes. Yeah, everyone can be polled. They uh, they track the um, the lifetime hours burned. They track actually uh, voltage readings. They vo they they track uh, total kilowatt hours used. They track amperage. They track everything. Yeah. How many receivers do you need for the size of a town? I mean, uh, it's, it depends. Um, in the city of Dover, uh, which is a little over 1,800 lights, um, we ended up using five. We put in five gateways, and they were determined based on strategic areas of the city uh, that were necessary. Um, dependent on the system, you can run 500 or more. Um, per gateway, but it also, you're creating a mesh, a, a wireless mesh network, so they have to be able to hop and speak to each other. So there are, uh, sometimes there's challenges in the city of Augusta, um, out of lights capable um, for putting in the smart network, which is gonna be close to 2,000 altogether, uh, inclusive of some of their city metered lighting. Um, we're probably going to have, up, we could have up to a hundred in some of the, the outer areas like uh, 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 to Togus Pond area uh, over near Vassalboro. Um, those areas, we're actually, we're not going to be able to make those hops today. 
um, and and we'll just put regular photo cells on. Yeah, those. I'm just thinking. I mean, downtowns are easy because we're congested, but when we get our, I mean, when I look at North Park, we have 156 lights. Mm. About 75 of them are in the downtown area, so those are pretty easy. It's when you get to the ones that are, mm. you know, that literally go to, they're only on intersections five miles out of downtown. So Correct. And, and a couple them, miles between each other. Yeah. Right. So when you're, when you're a couple of miles between each other, you'll have more challenges in terms of connectivity. But sure. Uh, and that would, in that estimate, you, you, you'd end up with a single gateway, you know, that would be tied and uh, installed somewhere where you can get uh, you know cat5 connection into your server uh, so it can have its you know IP address and and the gateway basically sends out uh, periodic polling uh, messages uh, schedules uh, depending on how sophisticated that you decide to uh, to run your system what you I know you guys have been doing it for a while uh, your photo Y failure I mean how do you guys have what's your do, I mean, what do you guys look at for annual maintenance for for a town that's looking to purchase purchase them? I mean, we're going to have some some sort of maintenance, knowing that the mm -hmm. lights will last, you know, 20, 25 years out. Mm -hmm. But certainly, the the, the photo eyes was probably the, the thing that's going to fail the first. That's absolutely correct. Out of uh, out of over thirty thousand street lights that have gone up in the state of New Hampshire, we've had I would say probably in the range of about two hundred. Photo eye failures, um, and the photo eye is the, the the probably the weakest point, obviously, mm -hmm. um, where they get sticky contactors, and you know, depending just on uh, certain conditions, environment, etc. Uh, we have we've had we did, and we wouldn't expect to have any LED module failures. It's very stable construction. It's mm -hmm. like uh, you know, it's like a steel wall, um, and I think we've had. Maybe a dozen, dozen and a half drivers, um, and sometimes you you can't trace back whether it's been from some kind of a power surge, et cetera, because we can't monitor. Uh, in most communities, we can't monitor what's happened. So, uh, but generally, they'll take a fairly strong hit. Uh, they've got surge protection up to 20 kA kV, so they'll take a hit. It's it's generally our, our recommendation that we're providing. You know, our council is because you don't know. Is you should plan on a service, uh, 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 a service expectation of about two to three percent per year. Okay. So, okay. a couple, maybe three or four. Uh, in your case, it's hard to tell. Um, we are. Um, there's a lot of discussion with a large group of communities that are sort of in that Gardner. Augusta, uh, uh, the Waterville bid was just turned in, and there's a lot of communities in that area that are talking about uh, coming on board all together and then having conversations with Coots Brothers. Um, and I think Elliot and Kittery will be in the same conversation about what's the maintenance contract? You know, uh, can you guarantee you know in X number of days that you can be here to address any maintenance concerns? But you can also have your own conversations with local suppliers. Um, about uh, that are master electricians that uh, that m might be able to provide a, a better more local service for you as well uh, as far as the care mm. those, are those things I mean so a photo eye failure or a trial failure that's just a part that you guys can then replace correct absolutely so the warranty on our products is 10 years the equipment the complete equipment which includes the photo eye is a 10-year warranty so if you have any issues in terms of replacements are required. The equipment is on us for 10 years, and if you know, once you when you start to look at the numbers in terms of your month, uh, your annual savings, um, you know, even just for the warranty period of 10 years, you'll you'll pay yourself back three x in some cases four x times across that 10 years because you won't see a payback on a standard installation that's really more than three years um, if you decided to go with a non-networked uh, um, option uh, you'll be under three years in terms of payoff when I think about you know look watching solar presentations and we look at lighting presentation it's fairly similar for you know buildings and things like that um, it's pretty amazing how quickly um, 
the energy efficiency in lighting, uh, street lighting, or you know metered lighting, uh, how quickly the paybacks are. And most of the communities I've talked to, it's two and a half to three year payback. Yes, and and we we're seeing the same numbers for for all of you. Uh, and, and that includes your netbook value. Okay. Uh, for Berwick, since we had your netbook value, I, that's inclusive of it. It's, it. it's three years or under. Uh, and you'll be the same. You know, you're looking at a little over two years right now until we get your netbook value numbers and then we plug that in and it probably will be. Um, and that'll be a small number for us. It yeah. was a hair over one year. I mean, it was yeah, it's, it's, it's Pretty amazing, like how quickly that you'll you'll be able you to get your. You haven't installed streetlights within the past twenty years. Your, your network value is zippo because right. you're, you're that guaranteed. Was, that was us. Right. So, right. But for some of us who've installed, I mean, we've installed streetlights since that time. Mm -hmm. That's where the network value goes up. So. Sure, and there's you know there's some communities that are writing pretty large checks out there, and still. Saving. The investment is three years or less uh, in terms of a you know simple payoff. Uh, big cities, um, you know, writing six-figure checks out there, and it, it it really doesn't matter because it's offset by the fact that your based on the tariff, your savings on your actual street lighting bill are going to be ninety percent because you're getting rid of your lighting rentals. The lighting service cost and your uh, your your consumption cost on your energy is dropping by 65 to 70 percent. The amount of energy that you're going to consume. So, and the only thing that you, so you, today you're paying for your KWH rate um, to the utility for everything you consume at higher wattages. Um, you know, a, a, a 50 watt high pressure sodium is a 65 watt rated with the ballast fixture. A hundred watt is a hundred and thirty watt rated fixture. Um, those are going to get replaced with twenty-five and forty uh, watt products. So it makes a difference very, very quickly in terms of the savings. So you'll drop your lighting service costs. You'll only be paying for the energy that you consume on a KWH basis, but you'll be doing it at LED wattages and you'll pay a small delivery service charge per kilowatt hour also which is under five cents per kilowatt hour that you'll be paying to central main power so it's very good it's it's about a nine I mean it's 88 to 91 percent dependent on what the uh, what the inventory looks like the balance of inventory between all of your um, all of your street lights but it's that much of a reduction and that's why it's such a good uh, proposal for all of you uh, to go ahead with. Are you guys doing decorative lights as well? Are you guys basically Cobra heads? Uh, we do Cobra heads, we do uh, floods and shoebox replacements. Uh, decoratives, it depends on really what it is. We don't build decoratives, we rebuild and relamp okay, so the decoratives. Okay, so you're just relamping the kit? Sure, okay. yeah. So we'll bring in kits that will you know, be very cost effective for you. But don't lose the essence of if you've got Sternbergs or Spring City, Grand beautiful finials and yeah, exactly. Um, those can be uh, easily retrofit and rebuilt. Um, yeah. We already tried that. <laughs> yeah. It didn't work for a remember? Well, it did. They were hot. <laughs> they were hot. They were CFP, so it wasn't saving us anything to change right. the bulb, but it did. Right. So certainly we. Um, we're, we're not the first company to, to be in Maine, and maybe not the first company that you've spoken with, but certainly I think all the, the benefits of having a company that's local, uh, that's put in more lights in northern New England than anybody, um, and the fact that, uh, you know, we're 10 minutes down the road from you. Um, for uh, you can, you can come find <laughs> us. Yes. So if, they, if you put regular photo cells in to start, Yes. And this change goes through and now they're going to, you're going to be able to meter them. Mm -hmm. That's something that can easily be put on later on, right? If you can do that later on. That's and, the way you and the, the effort to do it later on is you'll have a small cost to have a bucket truck, um, you know, travel light to light, but there's not a lot of installation work. It's going to be... It's a twist. Uh, uh, it's, it's an untwist and it's a twist with a couple of commissions on an iPad. 
Um, and speaking of the iPad, uh, we, uh, we do a, um, an investment grade audit for you, so we will confirm the actual assets that you have um, uh, against what you're paying for and hopefully have, uh, but we'll, we'll verify that and adjust, make any adjustments uh, with you with Central Main Power to adjust exactly what the inventory is um, so that you know uh, w what you bought uh, and what you're installing. We'll also, based on that uh, GIS audit, it's all GIS based, uh, we'll also sit down and do a lighting plan with you. We can go as extensive as, as doing uh, certifications and independent lighting design to doing a designed retrofit. Uh, and that's what most of you will be facing because the standards out there, there's only one roadway standard, it's called RP8. I think it's RP8 14 now, 2014 is the latest update, um, which is an IESNA, uh, Illuminating Engineering Society of North America standard. Our, our RP8 is, um, uh, while it's voluntary, um, it's a recommendation. It's really a standard to be placed on building new cities, new roads because it requires <coughs> continuous lighting specifically spaced according to the current standards and it's a little more difficult to try and reach. Uh, what we'll work with you on is to make sure that you have a designed retrofit that's looking at what's the lighting on local roads versus collector roads versus any major roads that we're going to come across. Um, what, uh, where are there sensitive receptors such as uh, senior homes, schools, hospitals, um, places that require uh, ad additional looking, uh, whether it be from the fire chief or the police chief, um, understanding why on a, a road that has you know all 50 watt high pressure sodium, why is that 1,000 watt high pressure sodium flood in the middle of this road? And somebody's got an answer of the history of why. And it might be because, oh, well, there used to be a Hannaford here. Or we found that in Augusta. Uh, the, the, this is where the old Hannaford used to be. And uh, we ended up normalizing um, some of these roads that said it's lighting that was for actually how these roads were occupied in the past, uh, but they no longer are occupied that way. So we'll have those personal discussions with, with the stakeholders to make sure that when we go back and make these changes, um, absent of any discussions of are you missing lights in critical areas, um, in most cases it'll be uh, conversations about does this normalization make sense uh, um, and are there reasons for any anomalies out there um, that are very specific to each of your communities. How am I doing so far? Great. So we're we're uh, we're going to provide for each of you um, uh, a, a small booklet about us, just a little bit about our uh, you know our manufacturing facility and history. Uh, on the back is a copy of what you may have seen in Maine uh, town and city um, that we're in on uh, right across from. Uh, Mary Sabin's uh, a note from the MMA yeah. um, that uh, that was uh, placed in this month. Uh, that's changing though. It's no longer 35 communities. It's 38 communities because we've just been selected by um, uh, we've been, just been awarded uh, Exeter, New Hampshire, Hampton, New Hampshire, and uh, Plastow, New Hampshire. So that's that's jumped, and I, I think uh, these numbers will be going up again next month with more main communities. Um, we have. Uh, a little bit about, we've got testimonials from real people we've worked with that have wrote these for us from Augusta, Portsmouth, Dover, and Claremont. Uh, Claremont was actually the first city uh, that we did. And then there is a list of similar projects, just about every community that we've installed, the details of how many lights we put in, who was the stakeholder, so we want to be right up front with you that feel free to call any of these people in any of these communities uh, if you want to know more about us. We, uh, we take pride in uh, maybe overdoing uh, the service levels just to make sure that you're happy because uh, at the end of the day, uh, my dad was an independent businessman and he told me you can, you can lose 
in his business, uh, he, he was in the footwear business, he said you can lose an entire uh, neighborhood from one cup of coffee. And we, we consider that to be, uh, I've, I've taken that into account as well, that uh, every customer, it doesn't matter if you've got if it's a West Gardner with seven lights, or it's the city of Augusta with you know 2,300 lights, every customer is important to us because uh, it's important to you and the people in your community. Um, a little bit about our uh, key personnel, the people that we work with, and um, uh, what, and and then uh, specification sheets to talk a little bit about the lights that we do produce, and this is all exterior lighting for. Uh, for this conversation, and uh, also a little bit about these totes, uh, something that's also different about us. We don't use corrugated boxes when we build our lighting. Um, every one of these totes, we put three cobra heads in, and they're color coded by uh, what uh, wattage they are. And this is what goes on the buckets. This is how it leaves the factory. So your public works garage or uh, highway garage would be stacked up with these enough uh, should we be fortunate enough to work with you and these go right onto the bucket truck and uh, the bucket truck in a following vehicle which is a, a dump body or uh, rack body uh, is behind it to collect the uh, the cobra heads that are coming down the old legacy lights and at the end of the the installation we've got a stack of these all put back the way they sit before they're filled again and we bring them back and we reuse them. Uh, and in the case of Berwick, um, it might not seem like a big deal um, you know, on an individual basis, but we take 313 pounds of solid waste that would be corrugated if we were fortunate enough to do the, the town of Berwick that wouldn't go into your solid waste dump and 173 pounds of CO2 that would be generated as a result of that corrugated, and we eliminate it by putting it into these, these totes and reusing them. So these have been all over the Northeast, um, used over and over again. Um, doing well and doing good is how we you know, consider you know, what we talk about our business. We're trying to help you uh, to do well financially, but also to do some good in terms of just you know, environmental friendly uh, practices that we put in place and obviously you're adopting uh, as well if you're hiring us. So I have uh, one of these for each of you and then I have a um, and, and certainly would would love to have separate conversations tonight or um, we can set up to meet at another time. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. Yes. You said you were in your own one. <laughs> she just said so. Yeah. I'll tell you. You should see it Steve. Great. There you go. We can talk a little more about that. Now, I've never seen the LED bulb burn out. Did they, they lose efficiency at all over the 20 year period, or they stay max output and just and go out one day? So. Yes, there is some lumen depreciation in LED chips, and the technology today has changed quite a bit. These Cree chips are actually rated at 262,000 hours, uh, and uh, what that means is that you'll see very little lumen depreciation, and the reason why it is, and these are um, tests, part of the third-party tests have to be provided by the Cree Corporation, um, which are LM80 reports which end up doing calc falling into new calculations that are Department of Energy reports called TM21 and that's how you rate the lifetime at what percentage loss is projected based on burning these for six and eight thousand hours of course that's a long time eight thousand hours is a, is a whole year 
Uh, I've never seen a brown before. And were those smart sensors tell us when they get near the end of life so we get prepared to have some changed out? Or uh, the, do they track the, 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 the expected uh, life of, if, if you're going with the smart nodes, the expected lifetime of the smart nodes is in excess of, of 20 years. Mm -hmm. They also come with a 10 year warranty. So but would that track the amount of life out of the light that's been used? You said it tracks the hours, right? So you could estimate yes, and say, okay, yes, it this, does. Is, this is used a thousand hours shy of what the expected life expectancy is. We should prepare to change some of these. That's correct. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it actually tracks total hours to burn. Good. Um, is part of the polling, the metering uh, yeah. that is done there. Just a way to help your uh, service contract. You can say, I'm not going to replace 10 bulbs next year, so we'll plan to have somebody come out. So Instead of waiting until they go out and say, we get a dark corner for six months, you know. Hmm. Would it be able to detect the degradation in that LED, that lamp's performance? It wouldn't be able to, de well, I, I would say it wouldn't be able to detect the degradation, although at the same time, if you're having, uh, hmm. the only thing that, would, could set for service that, that it would be able to set, to be able to alarm you on is that your, your uh, light output, and that would be potentially if you're getting some kind of a failure that, um, you know, we, we set alarms on these and we talk about what these thresholds would be. Um, and these are, you know, under voltage, over voltage, or, or wattage use, so that potentially they would, yes, if there's some kind of a failure, it would potentially ring an alarm, even if, even if it's a partial failure. Um, yes. But you're not going to see, uh, the fixtures are rated for 120,000 hours. Over 20 years, you're going to run for 86, about 86,000 hours uh, of darkness. So uh, you're talking about lights that are, you know, we, we say expected life is 20 years. If you looked at 120,000 hours, you'd be looking at 27 or okay. 28 years according to my fast math. Different than an incandescent or a fluorescent though, they're not gonna get that much dimmer over their lifetime. No. They're gonna stay bright until the end. And then Absolutely. Then and it's really through. because of the quality of the chip that we're using, A. Mm -hmm. And secondly, what's happening today, what's changed the industry is the uh, LEDs are being underdriven now. We're mm -hmm. using a lot less current uh, driving into the LEDs because the costs of LEDs have come down, we're able to use more LEDs and underdrive them. When you underdrive them, you underheat them. Heat is what degrades them. Yes. So it's all part of the whole package. Uh, the housing has been designed um, as a, a heat sink. It's it's oversinked. Uh, quite frankly, we separate the driver. The driver actually is on the door, so it's attached to a different piece of metal. So if the driver heats up, it actually doesn't heat the metal of uh, the housing. Uh, these are all sort of you know well thought things that are all designed to Which make sure that you doesn't like the heat. The driver or the chips. Uh, drivers and chips both okay. don't like the heat. Uh, the great thing about the the great thing about the Northeast LEDs love cold. Mm. They're slightly brighter in colder weather. They'll actually be a little bit brighter in the winter months than they will in the summer months. It's not that they degrade in the summer months, but cold actually makes LEDs burn brighter. And it's, it's not a lot. It's a percent or two um, that it, it really won't be detectable to you. But because they're in the Northeast, you know, if we were in Phoenix, um, we might not be talking about uh, we might not be talking about you know actuality of 120,000 hours. Uh, you could be talking about a third less uh, in, in those types of situations. So, uh, what what do you recommend? What are what do you think are the next steps? Uh, I can leave my cards with you. We can set up to meet at other times. We can talk. <laughs> So great. Time sit down. Terrific. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Great. great. Thank you very much. How is that? What's that replace? This is a 25. You're actually going to use this to replace your 70 and uh, 50 watt and 70 watt Which high pressure sodiums. This will be the majority of your inventory. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, this fixture, though, is used. We use it, it's all modular, so uh, I'm gonna.
take this off for a moment. If you take a look at the fixture, there's 28 points here. On a 25 watt, you'll see that there's only 10 LED chips. And you can see sort of the mustardy look. We have an LED, uh, a 10 LED, a 16 LED, and a 28 LED configuration. So on the 28 LED, um, we actually, through different current, drive both an 80 watt and a 100 watt using the same configuration in terms of equipment. And we, we, we use a 40 watt and a 65 watt use a 16 LED configuration. So it's so the same light, it's just different. every, pretty much across the board, every single Cobra head throughout your towns will look the same even though they're different wattages. Mm -hmm. They don't get proportionately bigger. Even a thousand, John was saying the other day, you, put a, you changed a thousand. Though. He did, we, we changed a thousand. That's a, that's a, that's a 280 that be, watt. That must be bigger. Uh, it's, it's a larger fixture. The spec is actually in your book for the, for the larger one. That, that's, that's a big fixture. Yeah. That's a big fixture. It's <laughs> but, much bigger. But a lot smaller compared to the thousand watt that you took out. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, sorry, it's a 240 watt. You're, yeah. you're burning 240 watts versus 1100 watts. Yeah. And I think mm -hmm. North Berwick is the only town that has... We have one. You have 1,000 watt flood, but that, that, that'll be... That'll be exchanged with a. That's at our. That's at our transfer station. Mm -hmm. Yes, that that's a big light. light. Yeah. <laughs> People go there in the dark. <laughs> it's a transfer station of public works. Yeah, public works. Actually, public works. Public works. Public works. Yeah, yeah, also dumb in the dark. Uh, actually, huh? I'm traveling. Yeah. Yeah. It's a box. Yeah. It's a box. Yeah. Box. Yeah. box. Yeah. Yeah. We have yeah. eight yeah. box lights that we have. Yeah, because yeah. I did notice the parking lot. Because I think people park there. Mm. It's like much better investment than solar to me. It pays back in three years, solar pays back in 40 years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I have them all through my house, never had one burn out yet. Well, they do go. They do go. But it's the, the when you look at it, over, over, over 20 years. Yeah, 27 years. Yeah. Yeah. And invest. 20,000? No, my guess is the total cost for the I think we're talking about Elliot's cost was around. We just signed a contract with 50,000. Yeah, to save a half million dollars. So a thousand times to save it. Are we all done, folks? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Chip. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Mike, probably going to set the next mic for the next one. I don't know. I'll set myself.